So you're a hotshot YouTuber making tons of money on AdSense, merchandise, brand deals, etc. You name it. Your videos are great and you're getting tons of views and comments, but there's just one problem. It takes you literally forever to edit these awesome videos. So naturally, with a little bit of extra cash, you start to get an idea. What if I offloaded this work to an editor, saving myself hours of time and even allowing me to make more videos with less effort? So if this sounds like you, this video is for you. These are my seven tips on how to hire an editor as someone who works as one of those editors. Now for starters, hiring an editor is a big deal. The first piece of advice that I give, advice number one, is to make sure you're ready to hire an editor. I know this sounds really stupid, you probably think you're already there, but really think about it. Likely, as a YouTuber, you have been editing up to this point. These videos have been your baby from start to finish. Mentally, you need to be prepared to hand off about 50% of this process. And as a recommendation, part of this would be think through what you will do with all of that extra time. Is there a huge cost benefit to be gained from saving that time? Is there lots of things that you're not getting to that you want to be getting to to further your business? All of these mental gymnastics will help as you start to think about hiring an editor. And with that, editing is a huge creative source for a lot of people, so make sure also creatively you're thinking about ways that you want to fill that void when you don't have, you know, hours and hours of that creative process under your control anymore. Tip number two, have patience. As you're going through the interview process with editors, if you find one that you really like, you're gelling well, you like their work, you really feel like their work ethic is great, keep in mind that even the best of editors take quite a while to fully download your brain into their brain. And again, side tip to editors, this is something you want to try to get really good at. How do I get my client's brain into mine. But again, this is a complex process to blend brains. It's not simple. It's not easy. And even the best of the best clicking, meshing, gelling, whatever, it still takes time. My general rule of thumb is that as a client, definitely find an editor that you like to work with because it makes this whole process so much easier and less painful. But as a general rule of thumb, three to six months is easily what it takes for your brain to get transplanted into your editor's brain before it just feels like you're not giving note after note after note and it's more of the technical nitty-gritty creative tweaking and changing type notes this can be a frustrating process in those three to six months it might kind of feel like you're babysitting but again try to find someone that you enjoy working with because you're going to have to go through this process no matter how good of an editor you are working with. And with this piece of advice, I would just say at the six month mark, if it doesn't feel like this is gelling and you still feel like as a video creator that your editor is not really getting what you're looking for, it might be time to reevaluate, is this truly a good fit? And don't be shy about that because as an editor, if we're still not gelling at six months, I might be having the same thoughts and that's just the way it rolls. Not every friendship or even work relationship is the best ever. Tip number three, set clear expectations. What are you wanting from an editor? Editors these days can do a myriad of different things. Have a list at interview time of everything that you are wanting to offload. Are you still wanting to help edit? Are you wanting them to do your thumbnails? Are you wanting them to help with the writing process? Come in with a list of everything that you want and that transparency will just make for a better work experience out of the gate. It feels tedious, but leaving no stone unturned and being clear exactly what you're looking for in an editor will save time tons of headache, and in the long run, even though it feels like a lot of work, it will save you a ton of time. Tip number four, make a style guide, if you have one. Or alternatively, communicate to your editor that you're hoping to start to develop a style or style guide. Speaking from personal experience, editors love creative choices, and therefore when given free reign, to make creative choices, it's the best time in the world. It's fun to play with fonts, backgrounds, effects, little bits of spice, as Captain Kirk would say, but oftentimes I have found that creative choices need to be communicated. Many times I will make a creative choice and it just doesn't land with a client, and in my experience, even though it's fun to be creative, 
it's much more fun to be efficient and not waste time going back and forth with, eh, this isn't really working for me type comments. Which again, if that's what you're trying to find, just be clear with your editor. But if you have certain fonts, certain backgrounds, certain effects, certain styles that you enjoy, be upfront and be clear with your editor. Again, transparency, it's going to save hours of time. And don't worry, you won't offend your editor. There's still millions of opportunities to make creative decisions when it comes to editing. Taking the ambiguity out of that part of the process is not something that will offend any of us. And if it does offend an editor, again, maybe it's not a great fit. Tip number five, pay. This is a big one. Let me just start by saying this. A good editor is roughly half of your channel. Editing takes many hours, as you likely already know, and again, you're probably well aware of just how much time having an editor could save you. Therefore, come ready to the interview with an offer that reflects this amount of effort. And perhaps this is a deal breaker that makes you think, oh, maybe I am not ready to hire an editor, even just from a financial standpoint. Because again, if you don't know what you're going to use that extra time for, or you can't even start at roughly a half proposition. But again, if you're wanting a really good editor and to build a good relationship and you are a one man team hiring your first hire, you really want to heavily consider around half in that offer process. Other things that could creatively make this more interesting is to offer half of the AdSense that could drive your editor to be more invested in your videos as well, which is always a good idea. But again, think about it like this. You could potentially be gaining 200% of your time back by not having to edit videos, come in with ideas on how you wanna use that time and be ready to pay your editor appropriately because again, this is a huge investment that could absolutely catapult your channel to the next level. Tip number six, there's likely some tools I would recommend you become familiar with if you aren't already before hiring an editor. Again, chances are you probably are aware of these things, but if not, here's a good sort of starting point. Frame.io is my first suggestion, and it is a great solution for working with editors. It allows you to do reviews on edits and videos by writing comments at timestamps and on the video in such a fashion that imagine you're watching a video player and there's little markers along the you know bottom of the timing basically that show where comments are placed and those show up on the right hand side frame.io is an invaluable resource and if you don't have an alternative way to do a good review system, this is something to definitely look into and consider. As for footage sharing, Google Drive and Dropbox have been my favorite solutions so far. Not a huge surprise there. Personally, Dropbox is better. It's more expensive, but it allows you to do really nice syncing and file sharing in ways that Google Drive can be a little clunky with at times, but generally speaking, if you're just trying to get footage to an editor and you're not trying to have an interactive experience necessarily, except for come review time, so you're not helping with the editing, Google Drive and Dropbox are about the same and it's kind of up to personal preference, but look into both and decide which one is the best fit for you and your editor. And then of course I would be silly not to on this channel talk about DaVinci Resolve and their cloud collaboration tools. Again, as someone who uses DaVinci Resolve primarily for client work and uses Final Cut and can see the difference between both of them, the cloud collaboration tools in Resolve are next level they are fantastic and it might be something to look into if you're wanting to help with edits if you're wanting to add markers for comments like davinci resolves cloud collaboration tool can kind of get rid of the need for frame.io and allow you to also potentially do some level of editing or playing around if you are wanting to. And here we are at tip number seven, my last tip, over communicate. Personally, as an editor, I've received a ton of praise and great feedback on my ability to over communicate. And I think that both as a person hiring and as an editor, this is a skill that should be at the very top of your list. Initially, when it comes to over communicating, this may kind of feel annoying at times. But again, in my 
experience, clarity absolutely trumps assumptions that maybe are incorrect and therefore it should be number one priority. A lot of times I like to even give my clients daily updates first thing in the morning. And sometimes those updates are literally, hey boss, no updates for me today didn't work on any of your stuff last night or whatever. Just being transparent about where things are at and over communicating. And I've, again, always received exceptional feedback for doing that. It is not annoying. Your clients will absolutely appreciate it. And clients as editors, we appreciate it. Talk to us. Let's try to get that again, three to six month window as humanly short as possible. This is a huge blanket statement, but at the end of the day, Editing is somewhat of a straightforward skill. There's definitely an art to it, but with enough hours and practice, anyone can edit. But what really will set you apart as an editor is your ability to work with people. That's the name of the game. How do you communicate? How do you interact? Do you leave the people you work with happy and feeling like, man, I just loved working with Jake today, right? Like that is something that you just have to prioritize because, you know, Sure, the best editor in the world probably will always find work, but they will get the best work in the world if everyone wants to work with them. All right, and with that, that is the end of my tips for this video. I'm sure we'll do an updated version of this someday. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your questions down below. And if you're looking to hire, I do have a link down there if you're wanting to check it out, um, hit me up. I love talking editing, so always happy to answer these questions as someone who loves this so much. <laughs> and again, thank you as always to our members of this channel. You financially enable me to even make these videos on the side, which I really love. It's so fun to make videos about editing. Again, I just love editing. So thank you to our members as always. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.